Welcome and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Corinne Rennitz. I am an artist. I'm based here in Melbourne. Um, I have studioed in St Kilda and I'm a Yank. You're a Yankee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your art artistic background? Yeah, um, so I... I taught myself how to paint with oil paints when I was 12. I, I got a, um, I read this book when I, like a, maybe a year or so before, and I don't know, just picked up at the library. And the main character, I can't remember the title or anything. It was must have been like a young adult novel. And um, it was like set by the sea and the main character like painted with oils. And I just thought it was like the most romantic thing. And I always like, drew and stuff as a kid but I got a like a set of oil paints um from my aunt and I just started like I just got into it um I really liked the way they felt and I so I I kind of think of myself as a self-taught artist um and then I departed from it from for quite a while I went to university I studied something completely different history political science um, and found my way back to it and ended up doing my graduate degree at the School of the Art Institute in Chicago, um, which kind of go circling back again to my childhood was that was the first place that I ever saw real art was at that museum. As a kid, I had family there and um, I, we, we spent a lot of time in Chicago and my dad and my uncle would take me to the museum and I just remember being really young and just really impacted by like rooms and rooms and rooms full of paintings so it was pretty exciting to get to be back there for school and find my find my way there yeah so you read that book and you got some oil paints and started painting was there an interest in art before that um i think so I think so, yes, there was. But, it, yeah, from going to the museum. But it, it wasn't something that I really felt like I could do or was for me. Um, and I'm not really sure why. Um, but there was something about reading that. I think books were really important growing up in my family and my house. My grandmother was a librarian. And so it, it sort of felt like this legitimate way in through literature. And that's something that I still really find a lot of inspiration from with painting is, is reading and novels. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously you went on to college. Yeah. And you studied, what was it, political science? <laughs> and history, yeah. So, uh, I mean, why didn't you study art? Yeah. I didn't study art because I felt like I wasn't allowed to study art. Um it, it was just this thing. Um, I won this award when I was in like seventh grade, maybe 13. And it was like excellence, like in my junior high school, which I don't think they have here, but um, like excellence in art and excellence in photography. And I remember my, my mom joking about how like I couldn't get excellence in math or excellence in like <laughs> English. And I just felt so ashamed. Both my, like, my dad was a dentist. Um, like, my parents were in the sciences, and it was very much like art's not, art's a hobby. It's not a real, uh, like, a real pursuit. Um, and I was, like, good at humanities, and I thought that was interesting. And so I was like, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. So then after doing your um, degree... I mean, how did you come back to art then? Obviously, you kind of resisted yeah. all this stuff enough to, to pick up a, a paintbrush and yeah. have a go as a professional. Yeah. I, um, it, I just got really lost. I, um, I, try, I, I went to Washington, D.C. after I graduated, and I was very much... Um, insistent that I would like do that that I was going to work in politics and I was going to work big time in politics I was working in the senate like out of school and I was like I've done it I like 
this is this is it. I, I've like made it in this thing that I went to study. And I very much had this like, I've got something to prove. I felt like I needed people to know that I was that I was smart and that I was legit, I guess. And um, yeah, so I, I really, and I hated it. I hated it. I hated what Washington DC was. I just felt yucky. Like I didn't feel like myself. Um, and it wasn't for me. And I, I had a friend several years into that life. Um, I felt a bit stuck in my career. I was like, okay, I'm going to apply to a master's degree in politics and I'll take it up a notch and that'll make me feel better. And I started and <laughs> she was like, your heart's not in it. And I had in that time gotten a bunch of supplies together and started painting in my apartment again after work and on the weekends. Um, so this is about five years and, um, I just, she's like, just go for it. So I took a year, put together a portfolio and, um, applied to graduate programs, which was a bit, <laughs> a bit, um, in retrospect, I'm kind of surprised I got in because a lot of people go to art school and then they go on to an MFA program after that. Um, so it was a bit of like an outsider kind of going back to art school, a bit older than a lot of the other students, but that's kind of how I found my way back. I, I find it um, interesting that you, you didn't discover, I guess, your distaste for politics yeah. until you were working in it. You yeah. didn't, at uni, you didn't, you no. liked it at uni? Yeah, I did. And it was really, I had great professors and it was, I think what I really liked about it is the, the philosophy and the, the framework for understanding societies and how people are. I found that really interesting. And so it was much more... It wasn't really a practical degree. It was much more reading and having discussions, a lot of Socratic debate and that kind of thing. I loved that. I thought that was just so wonderful. Um, but yeah, the the working in it and the reality of what that is is very different. Well, that's a bit cheeky that they don't prepare you for what <laughs> that world is actually like. Yeah. 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 I don't think I'd like it personally either. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame you. Um, I had a question, but I've, I've, I've like forgotten it now. Um, so how did studying art actually differ from, uh, studying politics? Because there's a lot of politics in art. Yeah. And it's a, a very, it's a political space almost. Uh, yeah. Depending on, on, uh, you know, who you talk to and, um, what, what you're looking at. Yeah. I think... The thing, I think that's a, that's absolutely true. I think every industry is that way. Uh, like, that's the way people are. And I think that's what I found so interesting about studying politics is that uh, understanding of, like, well, what are people about? How do people organize themselves in a society? What's important to us? And I didn't, the, the content of, I didn't feel like what we were doing in DC and what we were advocating for, it just didn't feel important. It didn't feel actually connected to people. I think that's what made studying art really different. You also get a lot of alone time <laughs> of studying art. So um, to just be able to go into your studio alone, work out some of those kind of existential problems, what you're dealing with, and then kind of come into this more public space um, more collaborative space with other people was a, a very different kind of um, endeavor. Yeah, and and I guess the reason I've, I've asked that because I've seen I haven't seen all your work. Yeah, but I've seen some of it, and none of it, I didn't see anything political there. Is there a political element to your work? I don't think so. No, and I think that was a really interesting discovery for me going into going into art school from this um, previous life and previous career. And I mean, being like uh, political art is a huge part of like American art history. There are so many like incredible American artists that um, 
have made like protest art and art that's about the political climate and environment that they're living in. And that was just something that never, I kind of thought that I might make that kind of art when I went to art school and it just didn't connect. And I think that um, was really interesting. I think part of the reason I didn't like politics and I love art is that there's just this opportunity for intimacy and sort of the messiness of being human that like, isn't and and the private life that we and the private lives and the internal spaces that we all inhabit and that we're all experiencing as we then inter engage with each other publicly and I found I was much more interested in that and in that in myself and in kind of in other people as well yeah that's more my flavor of art yeah too but um you know given that you're 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 quite knowledgeable about politics and things like that. And, you know, sometimes political art is like a shortcut yeah. to boosting your career. There was never a temptation to to just um, do political art just for the purposes of advancing your career? Um, no, there really wasn't. Um, and I think I got really, I think Chicago, where I was, is actually a pretty unique place for this. Um, I think in New York it might have been a bit different. Uh, the professors that I was able to work with in Chicago and the kind of Chicago school is much less about that. Um, so it never really felt like something that I needed to do. I think the other thing that I found was really hot um, at the time that I was in school is very much identity-driven political art. And... I didn't really feel like there was a space for me there. It just didn't feel real. And I think if you're not making something that's real, people can smell that shit from a mile away. <laughs> so yeah, it never really felt like a temptation for me. Um, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, have you spotted someone, a, a piece of art that you think they're just full of shit? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Without naming, you don't have to name names. No, no, yeah. I won't. I won't do that. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of it knocking around out there. Um, but I like. I think that's okay as well. Like, that's part of what, that's part of what, like, the art world is at a certain level. And um, there's a lot of people that bring just a lot of bravado. Like, being an artist, you know especially today, I mean, and maybe this has always been true, like it or not, there's a sort of performative quality of selling yourself as well as the work you're making. I believe that there's like great people out there making like great work who don't do that or there's different ways about it. But yeah, that's all part of it. So there's space for everyone and everyone's got different tastes. I don't have to like everything, but I think there's some that's full of shit. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the beauty of art. There's, yeah. some, there's something for everyone. Um, you, you spoke about, you, you mentioned the um, the cultural differences between, say, New York and Chicago. And I, I'm not great at geography, but uh, yep. New York is on the east coast of America. Yeah. And where is Chicago? Chicago's in the Midwest. Midwest so it's yeah. um, on Lake Michigan. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting city. Like, it's called the second city, so it was like the second largest in the U.S. for a long time. Um, kind of like secondary, like little brother to New York in a lot of ways. Um, and very, like, of course New York has, ha has like a long history of like working class immigrants and stuff, but um, kind of seen as provincial as a, like compared to New York as far as culture is concerned. And I think, um, so that just gives the, like, the art scene and the culture really, like, interesting kind of bent as well compared to New York. Yeah, because the uh, reason I ask that is, is, I don't know, there seems to be a, a I don't know, a little bit of, like, uh, when it comes to when art and America is is mentioned there's, there's a bit of gatekeeping like yeah. like new york is the like the only place yeah. for art you know yeah and then you know occasionally i've flicked through say a magazine or read some article especially 
always when it's regarding architecture and Chicago mm. gets a, yeah. a mention, but not nearly as much as yep. as New York. Yeah. You know, and other cities as well, but we're talking about these two. Um, is, is that the lived experience uh, of somebody studying in Chicago? I think yes and no. I think Chicago, I think if you study in Chicago, you study in Chicago on purpose. And um, I, like my family's from that area originally. And there's this sort of underdog quality to it that Chicagoans like absolutely take on board. Uh, and I think, so I, I think that there's a lot of like, you, you hear that all the time of like, yeah, like you said, the gatekeeping, if like, if you want to be anywhere, you have to be in New York. Mm. And I think if you want to go global, like eventually you're going to have to show in New York. That's probably just true. But I think that there's just so many incredible artists that have been working in Chicago for a really long time. And they're you're sort of Chicago famous. It's a much more local town. And I think the people who work there sort of see that as, as an advantage and it, it flies under the radar in this sort of different way where you can have this, it's, it's very um, sort of fuels itself. Like the artists that show in Chicago, they teach in Chicago. Um, they grew up in Chicago and it like there's a really nice ecosystem within that city well i mean look sinatra sang about both cities yeah. so <laughs> that's uh you know that that's got to be uh, that's got to say something um do you see an equivalence of that kind of new york chicago uh, not rivalry but whatever whatever the word is uh, do you see that here yeah i do um i think that's one of the things that i um, being really new to Melbourne and to Australia that I love about Melbourne. It, it very much is like Chicago in that way. Um, what, what, what's New York then? I guess Where's Sydney. Chicago? What's New- <laughs> really? Yeah, but um, Sydney's sort of like also like LA, I guess. But I feel like big money, finance, C&B scene, whereas Melbourne, I think there's a real pride in the grittiness to it and the fact that it's the the lack of polish isn't is on purpose um and uh, not a lack of polish in a like melburnians know what they're about and they're not trying to like show off in a sort of shiny way it's just about stuff being real solid and i think that that's a real equivalent with is, is that a melbourne thing or an australian thing that's so interesting i'm not so sure yet i think that that's um, what do you think? I th- well, I think it might be an Australian thing. Yeah. Um, there's a bit of a, uh, I've spoken with a, a few friends about this sort of thing. There's a, Australian culture has a bit of a, you know, uh, Australians like to, uh, chop down the tall poppy. Yeah. R- rather as yeah. America doesn't seem to do that yeah. as a culture. Which, which is interesting. That's why I thought, is it a Melbourne thing or is it just an Australian culture thing? Yeah. And it, it's not all bad, I guess. It's good to be, um, it's good to be humbled occasionally, yep. but I think we might do it a little too much. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know yet if that's true or not. I know about like tall poppy syndrome and I think they're just very different cultures. That, that's been a huge surprise to me. Um, coming here i think a lot of americans think oh yeah like australians they they speak english like how different can it be <laughs> but yeah um the priorities the values the way people are with each other very different um going back to the to the states uh you exhibited there um yeah how extensively did you exhibit in uh in not, america not very um just a couple of uh, artist run spaces in Chicago. Um, the time that I was there, uh, most of the galleries were shut down during COVID. Um, so no one was exhibiting. Um, so yeah, only dipped my toe in before coming to Melbourne. Are you, even though you're here now, are you still looking into, um, um exhibiting there? Starting to, yeah. Get connect, reconnect with folks there after having my son so i'd like to continue to exhibit in chicago 
and New York? Ah, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> take it or leave it. No, I love New York. I um, really, I got to spend a couple of months there before moving here. Um, and it, it's an incredible city. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, and exhibiting, you've I know of one exhibition you've had here because I went to it. Has there been any more? Because that was a, a no, while ago. No, I've um uh the co-op where I have my studio one hundred and six. I've shown with them, um, but that's just more like group shows with the the artists there, kind of getting some like curate like curatorial experience together and that sort of thing. Um, I'm hoping to do a couple of exhibitions um, next year. Yeah. Um, uh, where are you thinking and uh, what are you thinking of exhibiting? Are, are you working on something now? Yeah. Um, I have a, some work that I have never exhibited before um, that I – is older work, but um, that I'd, I'm really interested in putting together and revisiting now that I've taken – about 10 months off after my son being born and just see what is it about that work now that connects it to each other and, and how to put that together. Yeah. So what, and what, what work is this? What, what are you, what themes are you exploring in, in this series? Yeah. So, um, I did a whole series of drawings when, for about six months before um, I moved to Australia, I was traveling around the, the US, like month to month, different cities. And it was like this big kind of goodbye tour, um, which was incredible, like Chicago, New York, um, through the South, and then across the West. And place has always just been a really big part of my work. and. I'm really interested in revisiting that now and kind of understanding what it meant to draw on the road rather than in a studio and how kind of thinking about where I'm from and what that's meant to be and sort of saying goodbye to it, kind of these like postcards from the road, what that will be like. That's almost like a rite of passage for artists, isn't it? Yeah. To get out on the road and... and do nothing but travel yeah. and make your art. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's something I've done. Uh, yeah. It's something I think every artist should should do. Yeah. You know, it really changes your perspective and, and you can really get into that kind of the creative uh, frame yeah. and, and stay there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and having just different constraints, I think it's really easy to get cosy set up in a studio and things can get kind of stale. But, yeah, seeing just fresh people and places and eating new things like it's really special yeah, so, and so these are, are going to be drawings so, yeah because you i mean i've only seen your oil paintings yeah um is this a, a change for you or? no i always um drawing is always a part of my practice um and i tend to kind of go in waves where i'll do a lot of painting and then i just just draw um and when I say drawing, there are a lot of like water-based paints, inks, walnut oil, or, or excuse me, um, yeah, walnut ink. Um, so a lot of really similar mark making. I think what's really nice if you've seen like with seeing the paintings, um, the paintings are like quite layered. Um, I really start with drawing underneath and kind of create an architecture and then build these layers with the oil paint over time. And I think what's exciting about the drawings is they're these like stripped back versions where because there's no paint kind of blurring those lines, you can see what that looks like. And um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about those. And of all the things you just said, um, I have to know what's walnut ink? Oh, walnut ink's amazing. So it's actually like you can make it yourself like husks of walnuts um you know the like brown kind of and you like boil them down until with water and it's this beautiful brown like ink and it's quite transparent almost like a gouache or a watercolor and um yeah you can use paint brushes or these like beautiful wooden like nibs basically and um 
draw with it. It's great. And it's really sensitive to light. So I think that's another beautiful thing about it. You have to be really careful with um, keeping it out of the sun and things like that. Or it fades over the time. Oh, it fades. Really nice. Okay, yeah. so you have to UV light if it, if uh, yeah if it gets too much. Yeah, you don't. And you made your own. I ha um I have not made my own. Oh, that's no. cheating. I know it is cheating. I it is cheating. I have I have a little jar that um one of my friends made. So it is homemade, but I didn't make it. Have you ever made your own <laughs> inks or paints or anything like that? No, um, yeah, yeah, actually I have. Yeah, in school. Um, egg tempera is really, really great with pigment. Um, that's like, I, I had this great um, professor who was all about materials. And, oh uh, gosh, yeah, we made casing with like milk curds and <laughs> like, paint, like paint with egg yolk, which is incredible um and gives this really beautiful matte finish how, how do you paint with egg yolk yeah um so you take like you separate the yolk from the the white um a little bit of water uh what did we use some essential oil so it doesn't smell too eggy and then um <laughs> pigments you can use natural pigments or you know other powdered pigments pigments that you would buy and um you have to use it within a certain period of time um, and it will like wipe off with water. So you have to like protect it as well, which is really great. But, um, yeah, you kind of just emulsify it like you would a salad dressing and it bonds the egg yolk to the pigment. And that's that. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. I, I, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, was a, that was a nice little segue. Yeah. So. It's fun. <laughs> um, what I, what I actually wanted to ask is about the, the themes of your art and, and, uh, you know, most artists have some sort of a message they want to get across. Yeah. And I think, uh, like I said, I bought a little one of yours. I yes. got a little one on my wall. And sometimes I look at it and I honestly, I, I can look at it and I can come up with my own little stories. Yeah. But I'm no idea unless I, I read what you've written about it. No yeah. idea what your intention was. Yeah. And I, I like that. Yeah. When, when an artist does that. Um, so what are your intentions and what... Um, what I guess stories are you trying to tell with your paintings and your drawings? I'm really happy to hear that there's this sense in so far you living with this piece that your interaction with it has been that because I think that's the what I'm trying to achieve is a sense of intimacy, wonder, curiosity and I think um because I think they are quite private. I think there's what's a lot of what's in the work is things that I can't quite put into words or I don't feel that I can speak. Um, and I think there's a universal quality to that, um, that sort of having to live with yourself, live in your own head, um, being in here and trying, trying to put that into a piece of artwork so that even if what you see in it is something that was not what I was thinking, feeling, experiencing and making it, you're having that kind of, kind of, yeah, intimate like communion with the piece and with yourself. Yeah. I mean, I quite like that. that it's not just laid out and all yeah. the work is done for the viewer. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's nice to kind of create your own, your own stories from from a, a, a piece of art that you're looking at. Um, and sometimes you need the story laid out for you. Yeah. Uh, definitely with your work. Yeah. And I think there's a bit, um, a bit of like mystery and a bit of fantasy to all of them. Um, and a sense of, I think the, the emotion, if I was longing that I'm always trying to put into the work, I spent, like going back to the road trips and stuff, like growing up, I spent a lot of time like in the car driving like long distances. It's a big thing in the US. I don't know how much like driving holidays or driving long distance. I know the middle of Australia is like uh, vast. Australia is pretty big. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. And um, so there, I spent a lot of time just there. I mean, like kids now have like iPads and stuff. <laughs> 
my watch on a driving holiday. But it was just like whatever was on the radio staring out the window. And I think um, a lot of the work is just sort of capturing place and memory of place and the like the, the kind of feeling of aloneness that comes with that experience. Um, some of them you've seen also are like quite internal, like f more physical spaces, um, kind of reminiscent of things like nightclubs. There's always physicality that I'm trying to put into the work, like an experience, like a felt lived physical experience that you can't quite, that I'm trying to recapture often. Are, you, are, are these kind of images popping in, in into your head sort of thing? Because um, you mentioned your first uh, I guess foray into painting was the result of reading a book. Yeah. So is, it, is, is, it, is there a narrative that kind of paints a picture for you in your head and then you create it on, on a canvas or, or whatever? Is, yeah. Is that how your, your process works? Yeah, I think if you were to, like, if we're to use, like, literature, rather than a full narrative or telling a story, you know, when you read a really beautiful sentence about, and it's often, like, about place or about the way someone feels, I think about my paintings, they're more like that really perfect sentence or paragraph. Not that the paintings are perfect, but where you're trying to distill something quite large into something really succinct and small. So that's that's the way that I see them. Okay. So there's an actual image or No. No. So it's just No, there's never an image. There's, with, ne okay. there's never that's an image. Yeah. Um yeah, a lot of artists work yeah, from either an image that they can conjure in their mind that they're inspired by another piece of art, whether it's literature or by a place or, um, and a lot of artists also work, as you know, like just from drawings and then translate those drawings into the paintings. It's much more immediate and physical in the studio. Uh, there's not, a, I don't have a an idea of what the painting, what I want it to look like or what I know it's going to look like going into it ever. So how do you know when it's finished? Mm. <laughs> oh, this, this is like the age old question. Oh gosh. Um, get it out of your studio. Then it's done. Um, you just know, you just know. It's just, you, you know, you know when it's done and you know when it's not done. And it takes a lot of practice. Sometimes it's done and then you're like, oh, it's not done. And you keep working on it and you push it way too far. Messed it up. It's past done, which is... <laughs> is that when it goes it's in the overdone, bin? overdone, huh? Do you, does it go in the bin then when you overdo it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does go in the bin. Oh, that's a shame. Or it gets recycled. It becomes something else. It gets a new life. You don't bin the materials, but you bin the painting. Yeah. Now, you mentioned the word kids earlier. Yeah. You mentioned the word kids earlier, and you're a new mother. Yes. <laughs> Tell us how that's been. Oh, uh, it's been it's been incredible um and it's been so overwhelming um it's uh, yeah it's unlike anything i've experienced up until this point um and yeah i uh, so i had a show last october had the opening on friday uh on a friday night and then this, that Sunday, I went into the hospital, and a couple days later, I had my son. So <laughs> that was a bit of a wild ride. That's a ride on the limit yeah. there. Wow. Uh -huh. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he came a month early, but um, yeah, he was uh, ready to come into the world. And I'm guessing your son arriving has impacted your art making yeah. um, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, is, is there a... I mean, obviously, time. You're yeah. not going to have much time. But is there a difference in the approach or the, the way you think about yeah. creating your work? Yeah, definitely. I think, like what you asked about earlier about kind of ambition and have you ever felt tempted to pursue one thing or another for the career aspect of it? And I think before he was born, that was something that I thought, 
quite like definitely strategically about um, not so much in the making of the work itself, but about how I spoke about the work, how I put myself out there. I think having my son has really shifted my ambition and shifted it back into the studio and really just I want to just I want to be the real deal, you know, w regardless of what happens like out there in the world and like how famous I am or how public the work is. I mean, I just really want to do this for the rest of my life. If the, the, the pursuit of making art feels more important now that I'm a mother, which is really exciting. Kind of like there's more at stake. Yeah, there is. And like, I think it's one of those kind of freaky experiences where you are confronted with your own, your own mortality and you see the whole thing in front of you and you're like, oh, what, what is it that I have to do? And this is one of those things that I feel like I have to do, which is exciting. Uh, do you worry that this uh, kind of uh, newly found ambition, maybe not newly found, but yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. um, will uh, maybe affect your, it might affect it in a positive way, but are you worried that it might affect it in a negative way? No, I think, um, I don't think so, because I think it's placed in a way that's really connected with life and what life is, rather than the, the kind of like, get rich or die trying ambition. It's, it feels, I think it could be, I mean, it does, I like both art and like being a parent requires so much time. And I'm just at the beginning of figuring that out. So I have no idea how that bit's going to go. But I think um, I think it's a really great way to live. And I think that can just be a really good example in parallel with being a parent. One last question. Yes. Sorry, I had a bit of a, a technical thing going on That's here. That's okay. One last question, Corinne. Let's fast forward like 17 years. Yeah. <laughs> Your son comes home and says, Mum, I want to go to art school. Oh. Now, knowing <laughs> knowing what it's like, uh, how do you react, do you think? How, how do you think you'll react, knowing uh, what the world's like? Oof, my goodness, knowing what the world's like. Um, I think I'll say go for it. I think I'll probably be like, no, I know what the world's like and you don't know what the world's like. But I think everybody has to figure out what the world's like for themselves. You know, like I get to, I get to live this one way and I've gotten to figure things out and there's still things to figure out. And I hope, I hope, I don't know if I will, but I hope I can give him that gift of figuring it out for himself. It's a wise and lovely answer. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming along, Corinne. Thanks for having me. This thank was you. so great. Thank you.